Hey everyone, this is Roman Prokopchuk, and this is the Digital Savage Experience Podcast. Today I have with me Barbie Engel, a best-selling author and reality personality living with multiple rare and chronic diseases. Barbie is a chronic pain educator, patient advocate, and president of the International pa Pain Foundation. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much, Roman. I'm excited to be here and share with your audience and I look forward to hopefully helping them out with some of the things that they're challenged with in their life because I've already overcome those same challenges in my life. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about your journey. How did you get to where you are today and some of the uh, things you've had to overcome along the way? It's been quite a journey. <laughs> I'm going to start at, at age 29 in my journey. And I was living my best life. I was the head cheerleading and dance coach at Washington State University. I was living my best life, going around in, in limousines and private jets and, and really taking life for granted. And one day I was on my way to work and I got in a minor car accident, which that eight seconds just changed my life. And things started unraveling around me not knowing what was wrong. They told me I had whiplash and I'd be better in a few days. And it was becoming months and years. And um, now it's been, I just turned 50 a couple of weeks ago. So it's uh, been quite a few years now that I've been living with this rare disease that was triggered by that car accident. And it totally changed my life trajectory. And what kind of advice do you give for somebody that's trying to kind of overcome that or experience that in any point of their life? For me, the the longer and harder I tried to hold on to my past life, the harder it was to move on and create a new life and to be productive and uh, serve myself and humanity and society better. So I would say let go, be proud of the things that you were able to accomplish before catastrophe hits your life but know that you can pick your life back up and, and keep moving forward. It might not be the same life, but you can still build a great life. And um, it, it took me three years to get a proper diagnosis. It took me another four years to get the right treatments. I spent seven years in a wheelchair. I have a lot of health complications and um, I've had to find ways to overcome and navigate the health system as well as rebuild a life from, from, losing everything. I lost my business, my job, my husband, my marriage, or my marriage, my um, ability to make money. So I didn't know where I was going to live or what I was going to eat. I went on food stamps for a while and having to go have feeling like you've had everything and you work your butt off to get it and then losing everything due to something that was out of your control. It really takes perseverance and getting reorganized and knowing that you're here on earth for a purpose, try to fulfill that. And what got you kind of through, through that? What are some of the things during the, you know, the times you had to overcome that? What kind of got you by day to day and, you know, eventually out of that? Uh, I would say a few things. Hope was one, no matter how much hope I had, whether it was a really hard day and I felt like I only had a little bit of hope, and my cup was running over with all the obstacles I was facing, or it was a good day and my cup was full of hope and you can't really see hope. So it's the empty part you can't see in the cup. I held on to hope. Then I would say I got organized and wrote, started writing down, or at that time I was doing speech to text because I wasn't able to use my right arm. And, um, and, and I would, put my thoughts into writing so that I could organize it, plan and prepare and move towards my goals. So if it was a really bad day and all I could do was lay in bed and think about when I feel better, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. That really helped me get through knowing that I, I could switch things around. I could keep working towards my goals, no matter how big or small, the struggle was I was still moving towards accomplishing whatever it was that, that I was setting out to accomplish. So if it was just getting my doctor appointments correct in my calendar 
or getting out of bed to to take a shower or being able to spend time with my family, whatever it was, I, I focused on accomplishing that goal and finding different ways to accomplish goals. And we're so set in like, we got to do it this one way and this is how you do it. I had to get creative. So I'd say be creative is the third, the third uh, tip. And so first is have hope, get organized and be creative so that you can get through whatever it is you need to get through even if you have to break it down, do it in a different way, you can still accomplish the goals you want to accomplish. Give yourself that patience to do it. Yeah, and I think it's important to, you know, if you have goals or if you're going through something to, you know, visualize or have a, you know, end route or a destination, but also focus each day at a time, just getting through that, you know, what drives you, what gets you through. And I think the people that you surround yourself with, was there anybody in terms of a support system that helped you through that as well? Yeah, especially my family. My friends didn't quite understand why I went from doing all these fun things and living this best life to not being able to do it. I knew I would not give up all the things that I had worked hard for in my life. My family knew that I wouldn't give those things up. And so they were really there to, to help me and love me and support me through it. They didn't understand it, which at the time I didn't understand what I was going through either. And, um, but they were there despite not understanding what I was being faced with and what my challenges were. So um, definitely my family was a support, especially my dad. We started talking on the phone every single day and he, he helped me organize and prepare and, and find patience in life. And, um, and then my, I moved to, from Washington State to Arizona for medical treatment per my doctor's advice. And um, my new neighbor uh, happened to work from home and I uh, reached out to him and said, hey, you know, if I paid you, could you drive me to and from my doctor appointments or physical therapy when you have time, if it lines up with your schedule? And he said, sure. So I was paying him $40 a day to drive me around and on different days and in between his working and we got to start talking and he was a, a new person in my life. He never knew me before I was ill and he didn't know really what to expect or what I had lost. He just saw me as I was in front of him. And over a couple of years of talking and, and getting to know each other and him seeing me push through all the challenges that I was being faced with, we kind of, got to, to see each other go through some challenges in that time. And we ended up falling in love and, and I ended up, you know, building a relationship with him and getting remarried. Although I thought I'd never get remarried after, you know, failing the first time, but um, rebuilding my life with this stranger that just happened to be my new neighbor. So I kind of feel like that was like a touch of God saying, this is what is supposed to be. And brought me the person who, got to know me for me and not and who I am, not for what I did. So um, we have a really great relationship now because we got to strip everything down to the bare minimums in life and start from there. Yeah, and I think that's actually a great way to, to really find out who <laughs> someone is kind of, you know, an unexpected kind of uh, relationship, whether it be um, you know, uh, a romantic one, a friendship, what have you, but kind of being in a vulnerable state and, and it coming out of something that wasn't that to begin with, I think it, it's, you know, really built, I guess, on authenticity in that way, if you encounter that kind of relationship. Absolutely. And so it's what motivates you to succeed? Obviously, those motivations. No, go on. I'm sorry. No, it, it, it's definitely a, a totally different relationship than my first relationship. I was taking life for granted, and I learned that I couldn't do that. And and when you get down to, to health being such a complication in your life, it, it shows you the important things. Yeah, it does. 
So what motivates you to succeed? Obviously, those motivations may have changed over times and obviously what you were dealing with uh, in your life in certain instances. But what currently motivates you to succeed? Currently, what motivates me to succeed is I am here on Earth for a purpose and I want to I've gone through all these challenges and struggles so that other people can have an easier time going through whatever challenges them and and, and uh, gives them a struggle in life. And by sharing my story, it helps give me the motivation and the encouragement and the energy that I need to keep moving forward. And I also know when people hear, oh, you can go through a lot of challenges, but you can still make it through and that they see somebody else who's done it. It gives them encouragement and motivation. So I kind of feel like that is my purpose here is to, to cheer myself and others to and through whatever we're facing. And uh, that's kind of how I overcome all the challenges that I face today. And I do it with a positive attitude, like a cheerleader. My dad, when I was a cheerleader my whole life and, and um, my dad would say, how are you down on the field still smiling and performing and cheering and happy when your team is losing 50 to zero? And I kind of took those skills that I learned in that uh, life activity and put it into living my life. And the only difference is my life is now the, the game. It's not football, it's life. And it's, it's getting through the, the good and the bad times. No matter what the score is, there's always a chance for improvement and betterment. And I, I try to use those same skills, time management, responsibility, organization, uh, positivity that you learn in cheerleading and put those into regular life. And yeah, I'm not positive 100% of the time, I, but uh, I am able to better manage the sad times, the negative times, the highly challenging times, because I use those techniques to get me through and uh, practice makes better. So the more I practice being positive, being understanding, being patient, switching my mindset in a bad situation, what is the life lesson I'm supposed to be learning here? Uh, if I can't see it in that moment, I can look back in six months and usually see it. Um, and knowing that and, and being understanding of this is life and it's not happening to me. I am creating life around me and um, showing other people that that they are here for a purpose as well. It's different than my purpose, but they can overcome any challenges that they face and, you know, really living that life to the fullest. Yeah, I think it's mindset and outlook because you're not in control of certain cards you're dealt uh, in life. So if something happens, you kind of run with it and, and just adapt to the situation good or bad and you know kind of i guess uh it, it's hard to do as humans um you know looking at other people's lives or if something bad happens you know saying why me or you know i'm a good person you know why did let's say god uh, let this happen to me or just a lot of stuff runs through your mind so really figuring out what you're you know going through if something happened if it's you know an unforeseen illness or you get a diagnosis that you know, you may have not wanted, you, you know, you have to figure it out and you're not going to overcome it with a negative attitude and just kind of stopping uh, to live, you know, life. I've had several deaths in my family in the last few years. And the, the first one uh, kind of, I guess, hit me the hardest because it was in my adult life, the closest person that passed um, to me. But um, I thought about it and I thought that person would want me to live to the fullest and want me to do and achieve everything I needed to achieve and not just give up on, you know, my goals, my dreams, my obligations, because I was, you know, in, in a tough, you know, space emotionally and mentally. Absolutely. And <clears throat> I've also lost some people in my life. Um, my mother and father, all my grandparents, I'm the third oldest living person in my family and I just turned 50. So that's a kind of mind shift as well. Um, but they do, as you said, with your loved one, they want us to live our life to the fullest here. And, and when they, that person that's close to you or multiple people close to you pass, you do realize time is short here on earth and we do have to go out and accomplish our, our dreams. And, and it can't be done for us. We have to live 
towards our purpose individually. And you just have to, to take steps forward. I say always forward. We, we can look at the past. We want to remember our history, know what we, what we came from, but also focus on where we are now and how do we achieve our goals in the future and moving forward. And that's what those, those people who have already left this realm of earth and, and they are, in, I believe in heaven, um, unless they're a bad person, but <laughs> um, that's not for me to judge. And, th- you know, they are looking down around or wherever they're looking at us from, and they are wanting us to do our best and wishing for us to live our life to the fullest and fulfill our purposes here on earth. And when, when you have that loss, it does definitely help resonate what's in you and practicing being positive, practicing getting through situations. Once you get through a couple of tough situations, knowing, hey, I overcame that, I can definitely do this. And it, it is going to be hard. Nobody said life is easy. Some things are easy. Some things are hard. It has nothing to do with if God makes it easier or hard for us. It's what we're willing to do to step forward and be our best self and take the time to get through the challenges that we face. So, you know, it, it's really important to keep moving forward and being as positive as you can through that experience. If you're going to get through the experience and whether you're positive or negative, it's much easier to go the positive route. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, it's, it influences like every aspect of your life. I mean, your attitude and your mindset, if, and it resonates and, and kind of rubs off on people around you. So if you're constantly negative or you're constantly, you know, kind of moping around or using things as excuses, you know, by all means, if someone's going through something and they need some time to heal and cope and figure out how to deal with it, that, I mean, I'm not saying that's uh, wrong, but um, you know, when you just kind of shift and, and shut off, you, you know, mentally and emotionally and um, kind of it starts impacting other areas of your life. So if that's going on from your personal life or, you know, you've experienced something uh, to yourself, then that may, if you continue that kind of, uh, I guess, trajectory, it'll start slowly impacting uh, your loved ones, your friends, your work. So figuring out how to, you know, heal and cope, I think is important as, as fast as possible. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Absolutely. I, I agree with you. It, it really is how you face life. And again, it's not going to be easy all the time, but it does get easier when you, if you face this similar challenge or you face a challenge that seems equal to the other worst challenge of your life, it, you go, Oh, I have some perspective. I can get through this. Or you hear somebody else overcame it. You know, I, I'm afraid to, I'm afraid of this ride at, at um, Universal Studios called Dr. Death's Doom Drop. So instead of just not getting on the ride, I rationalized there's been how many thousands of other people that have gotten on this ride and made it through and they are able to accomplish something. I'm going to go and ride this ride. And I rode it eight times in a row to try to get over my fear. So I could say, look, I've accomplished this. I didn't want to do it. I was afraid of it, but I walked through it anyway. I rode through it anyway. I, I made it out the other side eight times that created a pattern. I can accomplish this just like I can face and accomplish anything else that is part of my purpose here on earth. So that helps me keep going and living and hopefully other people go, Oh yeah. Is there a rational reason to be fearful? If there is, then consider maybe not doing it. (laughs) whatever the activity is. But if there's not really a rational reason and other people have survived it already, you can potentially survive it as well. Take it, break it down, use it as a tool to help you fulfill your purpose. Yeah, I I agree. I mean, I I have a fear of flying every time, but I still fly. So every time I uh, I think heights as well. Before every time I get on a plane, I like visualize negatively the plane crashing every time. Obviously, thank God that hasn't happened. But you know, I do it every time. You know, everything is fine, and 
uh, you often miss out on experiences or opportunities based on that fear. So, I mean, I don't like heights. One of my birthdays, my friends took me uh, skydiving. I didn't want to do it. But at, <clears throat> at the point where I was already out of the plane, I had no choice. So it was kind of going through that and I wouldn't take back that opportunity. It was a great opportunity, but I wouldn't have you know, had that opportunity if I had that fear uh, stop me from doing it. So, you know, everybody has different kind of fears, especially um, in business and meeting people, uh, you know, fear of speaking, uh, you know, fear of potentially writing a book or doing something creative because people, um, you know, are social creatures. A lot of the time, have anxieties and fears about whether what other people say and think about them, but kind of overcoming that and doing what you need to do, you know, regardless of what you think people are saying about you, I think is, um, is important to do as well. Absolutely. And, uh, I had, a, I had a friend and asked me like, when's it okay to answer the door? You know, as children were taught, if someone knocks at the door, don't answer the door, let your parents go answer the door. When is it the time for you to go answer the door? Opportunity is knocking. It's it's time to to go. They sometimes things come to you and and you're afraid to open that door because as children we're taught don't open the door. Bad things are on the other side of the door or they could be bad. Someone else is supposed to come and save you when they open the door for you. Open the doors. Check out your opportunities. If it's not right for you, close the door. However, don't be afraid to open the door and give yourself that permission. So if, if you are an adult now, you're 18, open the doors, see what the opportunities are, talk to the people that come into your life. Everybody's here for a reason. Go out there and, and make the most of it. But also when opportunities come to you, open a door, explore it, you know. The person standing there might have something for you. They might not, but at least you had that social interaction and you don't have to be afraid of it. You don't have to be afraid of new or different or change, especially if it is knocking on your door. But also you can open the door and leave any time and, and go out into the world and, and live your best life and fulfill your purpose and your reason for being here. I agree. So what's one piece of advice you could leave with the audience, personal or professional? I'd say per, both. This has helped me both personally and professionally is getting organized. I now say it's my superpower. I've organized my medical records. When I need to file a medical appeal, I'm able to pull that information really fast, write up a, an appeal, give it to my doctor to sign and send off. And I help my provider get, get their work done sooner more effectively and efficiently, but I also help myself get the treatments or the tool that I need effectively and efficiently. So getting organized in healthcare, getting organized in your life and your family structure uh, has, has helped create more lasting um, experiences and life experiences within our family. As, as well in business, I've published nine books. I'm working on my 10th book. It'll be out next year. And, uh, being organized and sitting down saying, I'm going to take this time to write this book and put this information out so other people can learn and grow from the experiences that I've had and to better their lives in the ways that they need. Um, I, I want it to be, you know, planting seeds so that when those people need a, a, a tree, they have the seed to grow that tree on their own and they don't have to rely on somebody else all the time, that they can still accomplish the things they need to accomplish. And then when they do need help, they can go get that water and fertilizer and, and other things they need from other people to, to help that tree continue to, to bear fruit and, and grow in life. So getting organized is definitely something that will help you in all aspects of your life. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, lack of organization adds a lot of chaos and uh, unneeded stress and anxiety. So if you have different parts of your life, you know, work, you know, life, like, as you said, you know, related to, uh, you know, medical related things, because, you know, with that, you have things coming from all over the place. So staying organized and having a process for certain things, developing a process um, for anything in your life will reduce a lot of unneeded stress. So I agree. 
Thank you. So I really appreciate you stopping by today. Can you let the audience know how they can find you or anything else you have going on? Sure. So you can find me at barbieingle.com. Barbie is with a Y. Ingle is with an I. And I also am the president of International Pain Foundation. And if you need help with overcoming chronic pain and the challenges of living with chronic pain conditions, there's over 150 conditions. We do education, awareness social events, access to care and research. And you can go to internationalpain.org to find out about all the projects, programs, and, and things coming up. And then watch for my book to be announced on my website and social medias uh, in 2023. Awesome. Thanks again for stopping by. Thank you. I really appreciate your time and your energy and effort. And I um, am glad that you let me be here to share with your audience.